Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Thank you. Um, okay, let me share the screen. Okay, so we we start at this uh, topic uh, six. Okay, so last week we start. So uh, so far, any question or any clarification you require for the what we have completed last week? Okay, if not, then we can just uh, continue. So six and seven, right? Six is. Uh, Component production seven is the uh, installation. Uh. So I will touch very briefly. Uh. So uh, the six is uh, more on uh, the ICPH. I think some of you may know ICPH. So later on, I will talk a bit more on that. Uh, then uh, there is uh, some part that I think uh, is important in this uh, topic six. Okay. So topic six, right, uh, is a component production. Before you produce the component production, right, you must freeze the design. So that is the uh, different from our cast in situ and pre, uh, precast, right? So otherwise, uh, it's hard to change later on. And before you produce, you uh, you must get approval. You must prepare the shop drawing. Right? So like uh, our consultant, right, we prepare drawing, may not be very detailed for you to produce. So normally contractor or subcontractor will prepare the shop drawing. So those are very detailed drawing. They will submit back to consultant to approve. La. So before you produce, uh, go and cast the precast, right? you got to get all this approval. Okay, then you start to prepare for uh, production. Eh? So I, I have listed down a few uh, points here. So first point is the project location, all this one done, and this is quite normal. Dimension, yeah, it's a uh, shop drawing were captured there. I think that our consultant drawing sometimes those uh, minor, minor, non structural detail, right? We were not show very detail. So shop drawing need to capture this. Then location of those uh, still uh, casting, casting item. So casting item is those like uh, mechanical connection, right? Or those uh, electrical box. Uh, these are casting item. The uh, uh, yeah, electrical box is service uh, gun juice, uh, black out all this recess area, right? You got to capture in your short drawing and you got to confirm with the consultant. Uh, huh? So, and then next, actually, I want to talk about ICPA. So, um, because we want to promote, right? We got two parts. Uh, one is the uh, offsite production, okay? Offsite, offsite uh, prefabrication. Okay, but offsite meaning like we don't want to have in the open precast yet. That one is quite labor intensive as well. So we uh, intention is to apply some automation. So those to apply some automation, right? Uh, Singapore currently we have uh, five ICPH currently. I think number six is coming soon. So ICPH meaning is a multi-story, right? Production facility. So they have high DV or mechanization. So a lot of automation there. Huh? But it's only downside is they, so far they produce those uh, precast component. So the flat component. Huh? I think the PVVC, the carcass is they produce in the, this uh, open, uh, open precast yet. Yeah, huh? Normal, mostly in the Malaysia. Huh? So there will be some uh, circulating pellet production system, meaning it's like a factory. Uh, it's like whether it's a car or a manufacturing factory, right? There will be a pellet uh, 
uh, going across station to station. Uh, so then uh, there will be uh, automation. So worker no need to work one place to the other place. So here, okay, we compare these two, right? So open Picasia and ICP. So open Picasia is a bit messy, right? So this part is important. So what is the uh, difference, right? So this is a summary of what I have in next slide, okay? So in exam or test, right? So you got to write in this uh, uh, sentence form. Right? So by it's a summary wise, you can see in the table is clearer. So like you can see the environment, right? Because yeah, it's open to sky. So if it is affected by rain or other weather, right? but it's a um, uh, ICPH is in the building. So it's not affected by that. So sound level, the noise, right? So it's also quieter and also clean, right? Then multi-story. So multi-story means that uh, we also save, uh, because it's Singapore is a landscape uh, uh, city, right? So we need to uh, estimate the land usage. Right? So, and then another thing is also that if you are the factory manager, you can see everyone in the very, uh, uh, confined place uh, or you can monitor very easily uh. and then manpower is highly mechanized so it's a more automation uh. so all this one is uh, rewarded here so high automation is here so means that is uh, uh, it will be only one third of the worker is required uh, to develop the capacity uh, to because uh, Volume is more important for automation. Uh. It's let's say only one or two production, two pieces to produce, right? Not much different from manual and automation. But if you are producing in high volume, then there will be a, a more benefit. Uh. So to increase the capacity, the divert the capacity, then you only require one third of the workers. Uh. Then another thing is, um, Owner, just now I mentioned, right? Owner or factory manager can monitor more efficiently right? because it's in the confined place. And automation, uh, the noise and pollution, that is another benefit. Right? So all these four points, right? These are the important points for you. Right? Okay, so we were uh, briefly touched on all these uh, ICPs, uh operation uh, so that we intention is to know their limitation so uh, uh, designer or um, contractor you so that you you all can work toward to um, automation friendly design uh. so we can design such a way that it can be automated uh. if design is a bit complicated then automation may be a bit uh, tough so currently right some Manual intervention is required, okay? Uh, it's depending on the design. So we will look at four steps to look through the uh, limitation. So first is the uh, preparation of mold. This preparation of mold, uh, there will be a automated pellet circulation system. So normally they will put this, uh, uh, Magnetize uh, the forward uh, put by the robot uh, based on your uh, the, the beam model. They have the the machine will have all this layout and then they put it uh, using the mechanized uh, uh, magnetic uh, magnetic sorry not mechanized magnetic uh, bar uh, so that make the forward for you. But there is a limitation right because. Um, when we cast the uh, precast, right, there will be some protruding bar we need it for the joint, right, precast connection. So this precast connection, the rebar, right, uh, you, if you want to punch through the, uh, this, uh, uh, the magnetic bar, right, a bit hard, right, magnetic bar is all solid. So magnet, they got to modify the, this, that side. Right? Uh, so you can see in the picture, right, um, here, you can see in the picture, they got the modifying for the side that they have the protruding reinforcement. 
so there will be a manual uh, intervention required. So that, that defeats the purpose. Right? So that's why I think last week I talked about some uh, because connection, uh, because plant detail, right? I think the reinforcement are going upward. They don't go sideways. Uh, going upward meaning is friendly, uh, the manufacturing friendly. Right? But some consultant, right? They stay design, they stay be far uh, pro, uh, horizontal protruding. So design wise, yes, uh, horizontal protruding is a bit more efficient. But uh, uh, because the force is not very large, la, then maybe the, this kind of uh, river going upward is also possible. So designer should consider this one as a first choice. If they cannot, then they can uh, they can go for second choice. La, eh? So this limitation is also uh, uh, important for you. Yeah. So another limitation, right, just now is a slab. So another limitation is the shear wall. Shear wall, the particle joint. I think I, I mentioned uh, last week. So this is called shear key detail. So shear key, they need to have a, uh, uh, this uh, recess, right? And then also the protruding U, U shape reinforcement. So that will make it harder for the automation, okay? So they can, you, you can use other type of uh, alternative design to to make it more uh, aut automation friendly. So step two is uh, uh, doing the reinforcement case and casting insert fitting. Uh. So normally they will have this uh, separate automated or mesh manufacturing facility inside the MCP. So this one is a manufacturing. Uh, uh, the wire mesh manufacturing. So they were just just in time. They were manufacturing and then deliver to the 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 station, uh, designated station. So after that, using the this uh, uh, robot, they will put the reinforcement case into the the framework. So there will be you need to after that you got to put in those uh, casting items. So like a uh, flexible loop, this is flexible loop. So you got to put it. This one is need to be done manually. La. So then after that they will transfer to the this a uh, pallet table, right? They will roll to the another casting station. So a uh, worker no need to move forward. La. So they just uh, like manufacturing factory. La. So after this uh, revar uh, preparation, right, then cast the concrete. So using the uh, distribution hopper, so it's here. Right. So uh, vibration, all this one also done um, mechanically. So uh, no need to redo the manual work, fully automated. Right. Then after you cast, right, you need to uh, uh, tower the surface, uh, tower the surface, right? To make it smooth, right? So normally they done by the this uh, horizontal vibrating beam, okay? Vibrating beam to uh, smoothen the surface. But if there are some um, reinforcement protruding like this, right? Then it will require manual finishing. Uh, so uh, it depends on the uh, component. So like this, right? This is a slab. If that's a slab, then we don't need to have the uh, the smooth surface. Okay. So I think then uh, we can skip the uh, 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 step, right? But it's uh, those uh, those uh, element require the smooth surface, right? Then you need to have the manual um, traveling. So start of all this one, right? Like, they will affect the progress uh, eh, process. So that's why uh, they prefer to have a mechanical connection. So like insert uh, the hidden cover, that kind of thing, that is easier. So after that, uh, curing, demoding, and storage. Uh. So curing is also a uh, multi, multi rep. Uh. Multi-red, so they have a curing chamber. Right, this is multi-red uh, level. So you can see it in the second picture. La. 
so uh, they have many layer so it's more efficient uh, use of space uh. so after uh, curing then then transfer to the demoding right then can be that this one that normally is done by worker so it's need to watch out for the uh, things to demo and then after demoting you got to do the quality check okay so uh, once finished product can be transferred to the the store yeah so here the limitation right i think the 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 curing one so they are draw height got limitation uh. this one can be held uh. so draw type normally uh uh it will be well those are small flat uh, component so uh, flat pc component if you have an outstanding element like parapet or this one then they may have to uh, do the curing at different places and uh, this one uh, can be helped okay i think this uh, quiz right i forgot to change it to another platform Okay, so we still need to use this platform. Uh, cool. Okay. Can I? Can I? Click that can work. Um, Mr. Ong. Yes. Can you? Uh, yours yes. is on question nine now, but um, on our tutorial six, on my tutorial six or our tutorial six, um, the same questions is actually question eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly different. Yeah, correct, correct. I, I, okay. but it's a sequence is not same. Yeah, sequence is not same. But it's a, um, uh, I think the one question jump, um, jump by up, uh, but it's a, we already done the question eight last week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm so sure. uh, everything is. Uh, if you look at the the all the question uh, ten question, everything is in the uh, uh, two year six. Hold on, uh, I cannot find my mouse. Uh, I cannot click. Hold on. Okay, this one got giving me a problem. Eh? They don't let me click. Okay, let me see. Ah, no, can. Okay, can see, cannot. Oh, okay. I think we do it later, huh? after break, huh? maybe. Yeah, I will put it into the another platform. I think this one a bit uh, lousy. The only two questions so i will put it into the another platform should be okay so um okay the next topic is site planning and management uh, this topic will be very brief so i don't want to go into very deep so like uh, just to give you a bit uh background for those that may not be familiar so site planning and management is also uh, important for precast because it's it's different from um uh, cash in situ. So you need to crane capacity and crane layout is definitely very important for precast because you cannot use the manual uh, lever to lift it up, right? So and then site access. So it depends on the your um, uh, precast component to deliver where you need to deliver. So that one is also important. So delivery just in time delivery. Otherwise, right, you you got to arrange as a way that the sequence uh, you don't need to have a big storage on site, right? Uh, so another one is a storage. So definitely you need to have enough storage on site. Prepare for it. You cannot just rely on the delivery to install. Eh? So sometimes vehicle breakdown or some uh, traffic congestion, then it will affect your progress. So crane layout and capacity, right? So I, I just now I mentioned already. So it's a vital role, a uh, very important role here. So normally you should consider the combined weight, not just only the Picas weight, because you also need to have uh, some uh, uh, reaching gear to lift it up, right? During lifting up, you you make sure that it will be balanced. So, 
So there will be additional weight there. So the position of the crane is also important. It depends on the weight, right? So crane also got uh, different, uh, different measurement capacity, got different M lamp. So you got to watch out for the, the crane uh, position. Site access. So good site, site access is make sure you need to have normally, right? You, uh, you should have the two, two alternate access. Uh, let's say one, one access, one location got may very good breakdown. The others they can work, right? So not not so, uh, will not be affected. Uh, right? So that kind of planning is important, and also you got to be um, tie up with the where you want to store the the uh, material. Uh, so delivery. So delivery is um, not just about maximizing the payload, right? not just everything you one time you deliver, but it's about the arrival on time, right? So you got to arrange such a way that you deliver those things that you need first, right? so in sequence. And then without, you got to uh, deliver without damage. Right? So these are important for you. And then last is uh, site storage. So you need to have a, at least, whether it's a bit or small, you need to have a, a site storage for PCAS component. So that component location will right, need to be uh, firm. So it should be able to support the, those things that you put it there, right? then where drain. Right? So anyway, you once you put it there, right? Because when you deliver, it's also in sequence. So but it's, you got to put it there such a way that you tie up with the iteration sequence. Otherwise, you want to uh, install the one that you want to install first, it's all at the bottom. Then you got to arrange us again. Uh, that will affect the production. Uh, so minimize the double handling. Uh, so the right hand side show how they can actually uh, store on site. So like those are particular like wall member, right? You need to have uh, something uh, temporary uh, casey cage uh, cage to uh, uh, stabilize it. So installation. So installation, right, for the wall, definitely you need to have the temporary propping, right? So uh, you can see in the picture. And then some precast plant, depends on the design, you may need to have the propping. Uh, some precast beam also you may need to have a propping. So it depends on the design. You got to have a lifting procedure and then the uh, this uh, insulation sequence. You have to have prepared. Normally, you can use the uh, beam model to uh, simulate the insulation sequence. Uh. So installation, these are the generally we have all these steps you we, you got to go through. Right? Normally you have the storage area, you prepare such a way that in sequence, and then you got to prepare those uh, two like grouting uh, or you got any uh, mechanical uh, uh, connection, then what kind of equipment you need to do, right? So all this one need to be ready. Then you have a uh, erosion uh, schedule or delivery schedule. Right. Then on site also you got to check whether the starter bar are uh, ready in in order, right? Then you also have to have to have the reference line so that you can check whether they are uh, at the right location. So all, all those are uh, starter bar height. So I think that one is those like starter bar, right? You need to have a certain length, embankment length. Okay, you got to check the 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 proper land. otherwise you install ready then RE and RDO not accept uh, then may have a problem. So normally the sequence right you got to install the uh, particular structure element first right the structure element then you install those uh, component like uh, review tools or non load bearing wall right stay a particular element then you install the uh, horizontal element so that it will not block, right? so you got to sequence in such a way. So then next is, uh, yes. 
So, uh, this one ada integrated construction team education hub. Uh. Is there a permanent in-house RTO will be there? Yes. Yes, depends, depends, on, uh, depends on the uh, QP. Uh. So normally, right, uh, let's say uh, we have, uh, depends on the project site also. Let's say we have two RTO on site, right? Uh, normally one RTO will be there. Uh, so it depends, yeah. But otherwise, right, they will... For MNE, yeah, MNE usually they have one, right? So how is it? Sorry? For MNE, MNE. And many services, so that means also they need to one is on the on site, another one is off site also. Yeah, I, I think that is a bit hard for the uh the, the developer la. So normally, right, all this one uh I'm not sure you are your site how they do. Actually, is uh can be them that remove uh inspection as well, so that you have an RDO over there. Uh, so they can take care of the structure and M&E as well. So M&E, the RDO, the on-site one, right? They can communicate using the remote uh, inspection. So now the BCA also accept the remote inspection. So you can have uh, some uh, webcam to show the uh, show it to the uh, the other RDO. They can actually check for him. Yeah. I think if that one is uh, currently uh, BCA already allowed QP to uh, decide whether it is suitable to use the uh, remote inspection. Yeah. So as long as you have all this equipment, right, you can sh you can inspect and then you can record it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure you, you, you want to share your experience, any any experience that you have this uh, challenging. Oh, no, currently I'm usually on site, but they got some people order from outside, but I'm not sure how how is the arrangement now. I see. So currently you're working as an RTO, la, am I right? No, 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 no. Oh. I'm working in the uh, safety department. I see. Yeah, yeah. So normally uh M &E work during the casting uh, because because uh component pro production, right? The M &E work is very minimal. Yeah. So it's the uh, structural RTO will be there. Uh, many RDO work right? And normally they can communicate. They won't be able to be able to deploy one many RDO on uh, at the factory la, because otherwise uh, it's quite uh, wasting time, wasting the manpower. So normally the the location or the all these uh, service could do all this one right. It need to be approved by the consultant. Once approved right, they are in the correct location. La. Yes. Normally, it's a MNE RTO also located at the yard. So one RTO, one MNE RTO located at the site. So most of the component uh, is uh, produced by the yard. Ma. So that means uh, is partially if inspection, there is a MNE inspection. So hmm. RTO uh, attend the MNE inspection, no full time staying. Either part time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can, 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 my project also run this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks for sharing, EJ. Yeah, can be part time as well. Yeah, but I think it depends on the uh, the project's uh, site also, lah. Eh? And if project is very big, you got so many RTO and RE, then you can spare. But if project is very small, then maybe uh, not even two, lah. But if those are like HDV project, I think definitely you you can you can do that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think there can be uh, temporary. Yeah. Uh, like they can go to and fro. La. Okay, so the uh, next is quality check and testing. La. So quality procedure, I think this is quite standard for you all. La. You all already know, but some may not know. That's why I list it down. La. So quality procedure, I think the most important one is uh, uh, APCS, right? We need to include the uh, connector. So all this connector, how do we verify that they achieve the uh, the requirement uh, stated in their brochure, right? So uh, that one need to be worked out together with the QP and then specify the, the quality uh, procedure. So I think the sample size, normally one you how you do is you got to determine how, how many uh, sample size. So like 
crowded by sleep, how many sample or per batch or per site. Uh, so like uh, uh, H16, uh, H25 crowded sleep, how many sleep you want to test and then how frequently you want to test. Uh. So that one, uh, if let's say you need to test it at the accredited uh, laboratory, then what to arrange also. So all this one need to be recorded. Uh, so for you know, audit check later on. So I got list down a few uh, items that you can check during the quality check-in. So these are actually part of the conquest. So quality normally is you got to check the dimension. So dimension, a biggest element, right? Normally it's a plus 10 mm or minus 5 mm. So they need to be within this uh, dimension. So if you look at the those uh, services, uh, the conjugate pipe and recess, right? So that one is a plus 10 mm for size or an plus or minus 25 for the location. So location wise only allow for one inch. Right? Then the length, right? So length is uh, depends on the, 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 the L, right? So if let's say more than uh, uh, six meter, then it can allow 20 mm. But if let's say less than three meter, then only six mm is allowed. So we we are using those uh, grounded by sleep, right? So grounded by sleep location is also important. So it allow only allow for plus or minus six mm from the location from the drawing. So this a uh, river protruding. So it depends on the uh, the grounded type or the connector you use. Uh. So sometimes if you are using the corrugated pipe sleep, right, that one is very long. So I think that kind of thing you need to check the uh, length or the reinforcement, see whether it is uh, long enough. Does it meet the requirement from the consultant? Uh. So like 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 you can see it here, the one uh, I think is uh, not correct. Uh. So even the uh, short pipe sleep also, this one is too short. Then also need to check the hole, right? Grounded by slit hole inside got any uh, debris inside. You need to clear it before installation. So testing of the those are grounded slit connector, right? I just just to give you the some example. So how do we test and how do we make sure they pass? Uh? So normally, right, we we test it out and we make sure that it fit by the reinforcement, uh? not fit at the uh, this uh. Uh, by sleep. So meaning is uh, by sleep is stronger than the, the reinforcement. So this is how they, sh they should check. Uh, uh. So if we by free at the grounded uh, by sleep, right, then meaning is the by sleep or some defect. Uh. So I think important thing to note, take note of the regulation is like uh, if you are the contractor, you should look for those uh, highly uh, recognized ones. So like uh, European technical approval. So some supplier, right, they already have the uh, certificate. Right? So meaning they have a good quality. Right? So if you purchase from some uh, not good quality, later uh, PCA or QP may question you. Right? So I think the uh, proprietary product mechanical connector, right? They are developed to provide some temporary stability. So meaning is like once they you secure, right? You don't need to be um, like a hidden hidden cover something like that. So like you don't need to have a temporary uh, uh, stability. Uh, the bracing, lah, temporary bracing is not required for them. So uh, normally when you adopt the product, right? Either it's responsive, responsive, it's bad to bad. Eh? Responsive and QP is also responsive. Eh? So normally you got to verify the test. OK, what kind of test required to verify? Not only the certificate. Eh? They may have a certificate, but we got to uh, conduct the test to verify it. Right? So I think normally, like I, I'm not sure you, you all got some uh, experience. So normally to me, right? 
we will have a, at least three samples, minimum three samples per batch, uh, per site. Uh. So like let's say one site, th minimum three samples to send to uh, accurate that uh, laboratory to test out, uh, design test or any other test to verify. Okay, I think this is the last slide that I have. Uh, any other question you all have? Okay, now it's seven. I think we can go ahead with the next lecture. So the uh, tutorial, I will do it together with the next lecture. Okay, this is... Uh, steel design. So before we move to steel design, right, I... I want to highlight uh, later you all got some uh, hiccup, so that's why I want to show you the, the important one. So next week, you have this uh, test one, okay, common test one. It is in campus, huh? make sure you go there, so not online. Uh, and then it's some open books. And some of you ask me whether I can bring in the mobile, uh, not allowed, okay, mobile not allowed. But you can bring in your calculator. You must bring in the calculator. Uh. I think there are some questions that you need to uh, press the calculator. Okay, so make sure you bring the calculator to the exam venue. And then the test two, I think the okay, topic is uh, lecture one to five, the one that Chilan teach. Okay, so uh, lecture one to five will be tested in common test one. Then common test two, we will be in the August, uh, the last lecture type, also in campus, okay? No need to be online. And then this this te test two will be covered by this uh, lecture six, lecture seven, and lecture seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. Uh, this one is 10 and 11. So it is, they will be, uh, I, I got half, Okay, so my two lecture will cover uh, 50 percent uh, for the common test. Then uh, this bit. Yes. So what time is the test? Uh? Oh, test should be uh, 6 30 or so. Uh, so far, uh, so far, what I know is test will start first. So like your lecture time, right? Within the lecture time. So 6 30, we start with the test. And then once finished, we give you a break and then continue with the lecture. So the next week, 10 of June, right? Uh, my colleague, uh, Basu, will be there. He got one uh, lecture on PVC um, management, right? Site management, uh, something. So he will do the test first. Huh? 6.30, there will be a test. And then test will be one point, uh, one and a half hour. So after one and a half hour, he give you a break and then continue with the lecture. Okay, thank you. Okay, so make sure uh, you all don't forget. I worry later you all forget. Okay, yeah. I, Anna, yeah. yeah. Open, open book means uh, electronic, uh, like uh, laptop can, can be used as uh, open book, right? Ah. <laughs> uh, laptop. Uh. Okay, I think laptop by by right, if you uh, it should be okay. Let me check again if you want. Uh, just the mobile dev devices are not yeah. okay, okay, because we worry that you all communicate each other. Right? <laughs> so mobile devices cannot. iPad, iPad can bring or not iPad. Uh, <laughs> so many devices are uh, you all. What 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 you uh, what is it for you all? No need, right? Just that you bring your. Uh, Maybe you, is it because you didn't print out the lecture note, is it? No, no, actually, yeah. Yeah. one to save the is green. The waste paper. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we green. go for green and wishes. Uh, okay, so okay. There's, uh, there's a code. How much? The, we need to print, that we need to print out the code also. Uh. So there's a lot. Oh, there's a code also. Okay, okay. Uh, I, let, let me, let me confirm again. Uh. I, I cannot confirm because I need to check with uh, uh, my colleague. Uh. So Basu and Chilai, because Basu will be the invigilator, so he must he must know also. 
So I will check with them and then I will uh, do the announcement in the this uh, Microsoft team. Huh? Uh, which location for the common ties? Uh? Yeah, which location? Uh, hold on. Uh. Uh, so far, no one informed me. Like, let me see. Uh, there is one email from e what? <clears throat> okay, I also don't know the venue. <laughs> uh, there is a, I think he got sent to me one venue, but I've forgotten where is the email. Uh, should be same. Lah. I think he got informed me test two because uh, I'm the test two invigilator. So test two is at block 56, level three, room two. Okay, block uh, 56, level three, room two. Okay, that is the uh, test two uh, venue. La. I, I think that should be same as test one. La. I, I, I will never confirm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. I think uh, let me write down uh, later. I forget because later Basu, Basu will be the one in the gelatin. Okay, I think that's uh, about it. Uh, then we start with our steel structure. Okay, so steel structure, I got uh, six topics. Uh, those are fabrication and er erasing, right? That one I will touch only very briefly. We're not going into detail. Mostly going into detail will be the beautiful connection detail. So that one is important. I think those are, yeah, number one, the introduction to steel structure. These are talk about the advantage and disadvantage. These are also important for you. Okay, just uh, uh, recall the DFMA continent. So, structural steel is grouped together with the APCS. So, the one that we touched last week, they are grouped together. And it will be applicable for all the types because it's quite flexible. So, steel structure meaning, right? It's a, it's a metal structure, right? And it, it is connected, combined together by the bolting or welding to carry the loading. So it formed the structure by connecting with, with a small small member. So that is a steel structure. So meaning, right, it's like, it's not like precast. Huh? It's steel structure, actually, we got many connections, right? So meaning connection is very important. Connection design make the difference. And whether you save time or whether you save money, it's a connection design is most important in steel structure. So in modern construction like nowadays, uh, a lot of building use uh, steel structure. Okay, uh, depends on the country. Singapore, um, there are a lot of concrete structure. I think later I, I have a one graph on the uh, UK. So Singapore steel construction, you can see these are the uh, projects that use the steel uh, structure. So um, normally is uh, recently, right? Uh, Capital Green, 
Marina One or Robinson Tower. These are using the structural steel. So like UOB building that it was built in 1986, but it was not listed here. La. That was actually like um, 280 meter tall. That is a composite steel structure. That was actually the toilet, toilet building at the time la, in Singapore. So, but uh, you can see on, on this slide, right? Many buildings like Ocean Financial Center, the one that I did, and those are Marina Bay Tower and those uh, Tanjung Baga Center. All this building actually is a RC building. Yeah? So I think predominantly RC buildings in Singapore, la, mostly. Other than that, right, all the residential, I think it's, I think 99, 98% are all RC buildings. So if you look at the usage but, uh, percentage, right? So normally it's 15% for the high rise commercial building. So like UOB or those uh, capital green. So this one, 15% of the high rise is steel structure. But overall, overall uh, multi-story building become 10%. Uh, we only got 10% steel structure in Singapore. But that is very low compared to others advanced country like UK or US or Japan. Most of them have more than 50% uh, market share for the steel structure. So it, I think this graph is uh, for UK. So if you look at 2021, right, uh, this um, steel structure market share is more than 65% of the multi-story building, uh, multi-story, not the single. Uh. So multi-story building, I think it's, uh, 65 uh, percent. I think the single story building may be even more. But if you look at this uh, National Stadium or Art Science Museum, right, they must be, you do think about it, if you are the contractor, right, what kind of uh, material you will use, RC or steel, right? I think definitely you will go for RC, uh, steel, right? But RC to do uh, construct this kind of structure is very, very difficult, very, very challenging. So National Stadium, they are very long span structure and uh, uh, the dome shape. So the shape is there is for RC. I think it's very hard for the RC. And then it's also a removable uh, steel roof. And steel is also a lighter material. So the art museum is also very complicated, uh, challenging structure. So why do we use structural steel? So this one talk about uh, the advantages. So these are some of the advantages. So like steel structure, high strength. So if you look at the strength to weight ratio, right, it is almost three times higher than the concrete, maybe more, right? maybe five times, six times also. Depends on the concrete grade that we use. And that Datility is a measure, right? I think I'm not sure that all you have uh, learned the steel design. So datility is a measure that is a the the material's ability to withstand the the excessive deformation. So meaning like rubber band, you have a rubber band, right? You pull, it will it will elongate, right? But no no failure, right? So if you pull the chop, right? The 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 brittle one, you pull, then it will break. So that is a datility, right? Uh, recyclability. So means we can recycle many times for the uh, steel structure compared to concrete. And adaptability. So adaptability means right. Uh, we can reuse, remodify. Right. We A and A is easier for the steel structure. We can strengthen the beam or slab easily. Right. By welding it or bolting it. But RC structure is difficult. So productivity is also this steel structure allow us to use the prefabrication. So, and even some more with the high accuracy and precision. Speed of construction. Speed of construction, I think it's faster than concrete normally. And also they have uh, this uh, uh, profile steel sheet to have the permanent framework. So like you don't need to have the, the propping or temporary framework. So these are some of the advantages. 
we will go into a bit more detail uh, here. So like strength, so I think just now mentioned already, so very, they are superior in strength compared to concrete. And they're lighter, right? So uh, it can span long, span dis distances, so economically. So if you look at the aircraft hangar, all are sea stretcher. There's no uh, sea stretcher. Maybe they may use the uh, uh, concrete column, but it's all the roof itself will be a sea stretcher. So the truss, right, it can span up to 150 meters. So that is, uh, that meet the client's requirement. Right? So like all, all those aircraft hangar, they need uh, uh, more than 100 meters, the column free uh, span. So another thing is the uh, uh, constructability. So C switch out can be variety of shape, right? They have an iron beam, they have a channel, they have a UV, right? They have a hollow section. So they got many shapes. This shape has been optimized. You know, the iron beam, why, why it's become an iron beam? It's optimized for their uh, use. So that's why the uh, C switch out, the weight itself, right? Uh, they, they are heavier than uh, RC. Actually, if you look at the, the density, right, steel is heavier. But uh, same shape, but steel is more efficient because we, we put the, uh, those uh, more material at, at the optimum location. So the shape is there, there are holes there right, inside. Right? So that one, that's why the, if you look at the, the stiffness, uh, stiffness to stiffness, then the steel is lighter. Same stiffness, steel is lighter. But it's same volume density is heavier. Right? So the session is there already optimized for their use. That's why they are uh, efficient. Then another some more, right? We can actually fabricate. So we can combine this all component together, form any shape at all. So like just now the art museum, right? Any shape that you want, we can form using the, uh, we can fabricate the C structure. So, so that is their uh, uh, advantage. Okay, so I think just now mentioned already prefabricated, and then they can they are deliver and they are they can be assembled on site, right? So improve productivity like in a way. Another thing is also um, the A and A work. So meaning owner change of mind. So just now the precast uh, we mentioned, right? We need to freeze the design so that we can produce the uh, production. Still. If you change the mind, we still can strengthen the, uh, the structure. It's possible. So we can add the uh, steel by adding it. They can form it in the great power of the, the structure. Again, uh, the capacity will increase. So we, last minute alteration are possible for the C structure. So those high rise building, why they, they use this structure? Because they want to save foundation cost. Depends on the foundation. So later on, you can see uh, I think uh, there are some example like we cannot have a, a very heavy loading on the MRT station like that. Then we will use a steel structure because they are lighter. Then the offsite protection fabrication is also uh, another advantage, right? So more or less uh, 30 to 40% faster than the casting situ. And another advantage is top down, okay? So I think some of you have the experience top in top down. I think the other day, some, some of you asked me. So top down construction, so be, before you, you reach to the foundation, right? You cast the top first. So the, the first floor you want to cast first. So you must have a steel structure to go in together with the foundation, right? So and then you cast the first floor, then you go down to basement and cast to top down. So that kind of construction are always done in the uh, CBD. Right? So I think those are Capital Green, just now mentioned Robinson Tower, right? They are at the CBD area. Normally, CBD area, if you do the uh, basement construction, naturally, they will do the top down, okay? So that it will minimize the impact to the uh, surrounding structure. So top-down construction actually is safer. 
in a way. And then overall, right, if you use the seed structure, there is a 10 to 20 percent manpower and time saving. Okay, sustainability is another advantage. So we can endlessly uh, recycle. Huh? So meaning uh, it's more economical friendly. Huh? Okay, not all not all are good. Huh? So like they also got their weakness. So one of them will be the corrosion. So yeah, steel structure, if you don't maintain properly, I think the uh, corrosion is one of the uh, uh, factor that it will uh, it will shorten the lifespan. Uh, yeah. So we got to have the anti-corrosion paint that we need to renew time to time and inspect and yeah and maintain it properly. Uh. But if you maintain it properly, right? If you look at the the right hand side, the the picture here, Port Ray Bridge in UK, it was built hundred years uh, ago, more than hundred years ago. So uh, and they now stay standing. Right. So if you maintain it properly, definitely it, it can last longer than the uh, uh, RC. Yeah. Another thing is a uh, fire resistant. So C stretcher have a very small fire resistant. So that is uh, another uh, barrier that Singapore doesn't um, adopt C stretcher. You know the Singapore, the prior protection, all this coating, right? Singapore in Singapore is more expensive than other other country. I don't know why. <laughs> so here more expensive. So become like they will jack up the overall cost, lah. So everyone know that uh, World Trade Center collapse, right? So uh, basically, uh, collision with the plane is one, but uh, the whole tower collapse is due to the the fire. So sea structure cannot last, uh, cannot stand in the big fire for very long. So that's why we need to put the, all those uh, fire protection. We will touch on it later on. Then the third item that disadvantage, right, is a fatigue. So fatigue means, right, meaning if one member is subjected to cyclic loading, so like, uh, like a traffic, right? so come and go, come and go kind of things, then Due to this repeated loading, right, there will be some uh, stress concentration and then will be micro crack appearing. So compared to concrete, right, still got a lot of uh, uh, imperfection location. So like uh, weather joint or bolted joint. So these locations are the location that the stress, stress concentration is there. Right? Then especially the weather joint. So normally as a designer, right, I know I will not check the border joint for fatigue, but I will check the weather joint for fatigue. Yeah. For those uh, bridges, normal bridges, nah, so like the uh, uh, traffic normally come and go kind of things. Uh. So this location are the one that is quite uh, important to check. Oh, and then next uh, disadvantage is floor vibration. So this structure is lighter. Right? So that that make it uh, susceptible to floor vibration. So vibration come from like you do the running, jumping, right? Also can come from the uh, equipment. So you got to take note of the this uh, vibration issue depending on the uh, type of the building. So like uh, like for example hospital. Those are scanning location or lab sensitive lab equipment. Then maybe you got to design such a way that it is stiffer. So normally the vibration, right? It is uh, proportional to the stiffness, proportional to your deflection of the structure. So and then the the weight itself, right? Actually, it's a damping. So uh, heavier weight will have a uh, more damping. So that's why the concrete are stiffer and then they have a lesser vibration problem. But if steel structure also you can design to ensure that it's satisfying the client requirement. So you can just put a stiffer beam, closer beam, then you can actually satisfy the requirement. Okay, so those we talk about uh, advantage and disadvantage now is we compare again, uh, compare with the RC structure. So if you compare with the RC structure, uh, 
C and R C, right? C is a data, I think we just talked about it, but it's uh, here is a bit more elaboration. Uh. So data invading, right? We need it for seismic because seismic, right? Um, we cannot control the seismic. We cannot estimate the seismic because currently what we estimate is based on whatever happened in the past. So you cannot hear. Ah, cannot hear. Wait, wait, suddenly, la. Is it suddenly? Yeah. Sorry. Now can. Now cannot. Wait. Just now, like uh, five minutes ago, cannot. Like two minutes ago. Oh, I was just just talking like that. <laughs> oh, is it? Why not? Nah? Now can ah? Okay, so uh, now okay. Yeah. So if you cannot hear anything ah, better better say so. Otherwise, I will be just talking in the air. <laughs> So uh, still is a data material, right? Uh, seismic, definitely we need a data material. Data building are safer. So like you can see that those timber building in the seismic zone, they are the safest. Yeah, they won't, they won't be, uh, uh, they won't, they won't collapse very easily. Yeah? So because it's seismic something like we cannot predict the seismic force. What we predict currently, right, is based on um, past. 100 years based on the historical data, we predict the data, but nobody can guarantee that seismic can be more severe than the in the past. Nobody can guarantee. So means you are building is that how many they can go for uh, excessive deformation. They can go excessive deformation, but they won't collapse. So once you deform, right, it, it absorb the uh, uh, energy. So so it will become lesser deformation. Otherwise, uh, uh, lesser how to say lesser movement. Uh, after the, after a while, it, it will uh, stabilize. So the concrete is very brittle. So once they crack, right, it cannot recover back. So it it it, it will likely to collapse. So that is a uh, that may be the reason that is a uh, Western country they have a lot of steel building uh, possible also. Because uh, in Singapore, we do RC structure. Our seismic design, our seismic loading is a lot uh, smaller than the uh, other country. So that's why the RC design is still economical. Otherwise, RC design, right? If you design for seismic, you need a lot of reinforcement. And you are detailing is special detailing. So uh, in Singapore, we don't need that kind of uh, design yet. So another thing is a uh, steel structure is suitable for long span structure. So, so if you uh, in in the exam right, we I, I asked you about uh, advantage, uh, uh, list out uh, some advantage of the steel structure. So you may come up from this uh, three topic that I taught just now touch on it. You can just uh, those uh, uh, point that you you like. You can just uh, answer. Okay. So you can. Uh, Make it shorter one also can, yeah. And you can answer based on your own uh, wording is also acceptable. Uh, no need to uh, answer word by word. Uh, as long as you meet the uh, important points, it's okay. So offsite, okay. I think this one is also the same. So they are uh, they can be fabricated offsite by the. Uh, professional skill, skill fabricator, uh, they can be the uh, normal worker, uh, this one by a skilled worker. So they are easy to transform. I think this is uh, something that is different from PICAS. So PICAS also can be offsite, be fabricated, they can transform. But the main main difference is PICAS, right, like PVPC, is you be fabricated offsite, but um, you need to transport, let's say, like very big uh, room or very big structure. You can't really precast, uh, prefabricate everything on uh, offsite. You got to bring it on site and then put at the final location and you cast it again together. But uh, this uh, steel structure is not. You can actually bring in part by part. You don't. You don't need to worry about uh, all need to fix at the offsite. You can actually. Uh, Assemble again on site on the ground. Uh, that is actually uh, steel structures uh, advantage. 
you can assemble it on the ground before you live up to the uh, final location. So big structure, you can actually, uh, oh, I think I got later on got uh, some photo. Uh, that one, I will touch on it again. Um, yeah, it's faster than the steel. Yeah, faster with the C stretcher, yeah, correct. That one is, uh, I think, a touch ready. And this one also the same, uh, sustainability, and also a safer option. Uh, so meaning, because the C stretcher, everything is uh, prefabricated off-site, so meaning lesser worker on-site, so they are safer, uh, generally. So uh, that's not what I mentioned. So case study. So this one is talk about uh, some uh, project that we have it in Singapore. So if you look at Robinson Tower and uh, Capital Green, so they are in CBD. I think it's uh, because of that, they also have a site constraint, then they use the steel structure. So if you, you cast the concrete, right? I think the concrete casting of the concrete, uh, I think you need to have order the really mix concrete and then uh, line up for the uh, uh, bumping to the top. I think it's also a, a logistically have a, have a problem. Yeah. And then also all these building, right, they have a basement. So if they adopt the uh, top down construction, generally they have to use the steel column inside also. So that also, uh, play a part. And then you look at the right hand side, Robinson Key. So here, right, there is an MRT tunnel running right across the building. So, so they have to use a sea switcher to make it lighter. And then in, in a way, is they also cannot have a, any column on top of the MRT, right? So they got to spend a long span uh, structure to span across the MRT tunnel. So that is another uh, consideration. So this one is the orchard then, uh, the one that I did uh, last time. So it's on top of the orchard MRT. So if you look at here, right, this is orchard MRT. So when we are constructing the orchard then, right, orchard MRT is in operation. We don't touch it at all. So, and then even the dome also. So we don't touch it at all. On top, we build another uh, seven story. Uh, car park and then the uh, some retail also. So then that's why we need to have a use the steel structure. It's very in the five story height and the steel structure is a five story height, the truss. Uh, then the, the, we have uh, the span line is 80 meter long. Yeah, 80 meter long. So yeah, uh, we, we use RC, right? It, it's a bit, a bit difficult because of the weight. And then also they're using the steel stretcher, right? Uh, is save time. So if you look at the, there are some project reported they have a saving. So PCA got some record. Uh. So I think you can see the capital green got five to six uh, month saving. Marina one has two to three month saving. And th this uh, uh, is done in, what, I think 20 years back, I think all this uh, building, and more than 20 years old, I think 20 to 25 years old. So the capital tower, right, if you look at it, 52 story, they use the steel structure, but it's a composite floor. La. We will touch on it on composite later on. So the construction speed and comp uh, cost, they compare the speed and cost, right? They say uh, developer uh, go for steel because it's, it's a competitive is almost comparable, but they, they save the time. Uh, cost is comparable, but save the time. That's why they go for steel. And then they have achieved the uh, maximum uh, free space, right? 18 meter long. And then the steel beam is 11.5 uh, meter. So you can see on the right, right? Uh, this is a steel column, composite column. It's a steel column tube inside or concrete inside. This one is a UOB center. The one that I mentioned is a 60 story, uh, 280 meter tall. It's a, it's a, it was the uh, tallest building in Singapore. Right? So this one also, the column free space, they, they want to achieve is 20 meter and 41 meter. 
So they need to use a steel stretcher. What they use was a, a steel trusses. They use a steel trusses. You can see the truss here. So the truss, one thing, uh, good thing about truss, right? Because it's triangular uh, shape, right? In between got hole. So you can make use of hole to accommodate the services. Okay, let me see. Uh, I'm ready. Okay, I give you all the uh, break. Uh. Okay, so before we start this one, I'll give you a uh, 15 minute break. 15. Uh. So we come back on 7 57. Stop sharing. Okay, come back at uh, seven.
Okay, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, let's start. Uh, we got time, then we can do a revision. That is what you all want, right? Yeah. So, topic two is steel, compo steel concrete composite structure. So, if we talk about steel structure, right, we will not complete if we don't talk about composite because uh, even though we use steel structure, our floor is still a concrete. Normally, people prefer to have a concrete. So, we need to make use of two material to combine together and make use of two of them to uh, in more efficient way uh, by designing as a composite. So you, if you look at it, uh, uh, sir, sorry, no, no slide, only your 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 camera only. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah, you're right. Uh, hey, where you go? Sorry, yeah, I forgot to share. Yeah, I forgot. Sorry, sorry. Can can see, yeah. Uh? Can can see, can see. Thank you. So we need to make use of steel and composite, uh, steel and concrete. Uh, so concrete is good at the compression, but they are not good in tension. Steel is good in both concrete and compression, but when it comes to concrete, right, steel structure. The strength is so high, so you do, you your member section is so thin, so it becomes slender. So it it will be the their main disadvantage is buckling, so they can buckle. So if we combine these two together, then it solves all the problem. Okay, so if we have a section like this, right, on top concrete here, and bottom is a steel, right. So once you have a loading. Bottom is in tension, top is in compression. Then the top flange or the steel beam is also in compression, but it will be restrained by the floor slab with the uh, this uh, shear stuff. So it solves everything. So that's why the composite uh, design, right? The capacity is so much higher than the steel design. So it can spend longer span, right? Then it also can eliminate the temporary forward because we will have a steel profile. As you can see it here, right? The trapezoidal profile is here. So this uh, steel uh, profile sheet is spanning from beam to beam. That will form as a uh, permanent forward, right? Then we can eliminate the temporary forward as well. So the composite structure definitely is very uh, efficient. So all the uh, multi-story building that I mentioned just now, like Capital Green or Rubicin Dawa, they all use a composite, uh, composite beam and composite column design. But one thing is to take note, right? To achieve the composite action, you need to have, you need to eliminate the slit. So like if you have stacked up together two, um, two material you stack together, right? Once you press it, when one thing becomes shorter and then the other one is longer, right? So they will, they will have a ten, uh, shear in between. So if you don't connect these two together, they will not have a composite action. So to have the composite action, you need to have the shear stuff to connect these two together. Okay, so we got a lot of shear connector, type of shear connector. La. The first one is the most commonly used, uh, this is shear stuff. Okay, so we got angle, we got the loop. Okay, so depends on the capacity we need. Uh, but it's a normal residential building, residential or commercial building, right? It's a shear stuff is good enough. I did this uh, right hand side one, the loop, right? Maybe they use it in the those, those uh, bridge, bridges. Yeah, those bridges, they use a uh, higher capacity. So composite, Normally, even though we talk about profile sheet, right, just not uh, steel decking, uh, we we can have so many uh, types. So, like the first one you see here, 
there's no um, profile sheet, but it's a case residue. So meaning that you need the formwork. But this is less common. Uh, so normally uh, nobody use this one. OK, the second one here is a precast plant. So you also can use together with the precast plant and then together with the topping. But you, see, you still need to have the shear connector to have the composite action. Then the third one is the precast slab. So this one is a without topping. Then the fourth one is a with the steel decking. So this is the most common type. So normally what I see here is all, all on this uh, steel decking. <coughs> steel decking, you can see here, they were span across the beam, right? So we have a uh, two beam here. Yeah. So you, you can cut through with the uh, cutter here. So shear connector, they install using the uh, special the welding. Okay, so it's not just by hand uh, manual welding. Uh, they use a uh, can to uh, uh, shoot and weld at the same time. So C beam, right? Uh, you composite. You can design as a composite beam, and also you can have a uh, hole to allow for these uh, surfaces to go through. So depending on the depth of the beam, I think sometimes depending on the span to span length, you need a deeper beam. In, in that case, you need to allow for services to go through. Otherwise, the ceiling height will be lower. And then you, if you have a very long span, then you can make use of composite uh, truss. So that is also very efficient. So another type is composite column. So composite column, um, there are many types, but I think you can see here, right? A is concrete phase cube, so it's a hollow section. So just pour the concrete in, but there is no reinforcement inside. Then second type is reinforcement inside together. That is a hollow cube also, but third one is with a steel section inside. So one thing good about this or hollow section, right? They don't need a forward to cast the uh, column, right? The the outer shell is a forward. Then the fourth one is the concrete and case um, uh, session. So that meaning concrete is uh, cast with the forward outside the steel section. But one thing good about this one, right? Steel just now we mentioned is uh, not good in fire resistant. So if you cast uh, and case with the concrete, right? Concrete will become a fire protection. Uh, that is uh, another advantage. So advantages, right? Um, normally using the con uh, composite compared to uh, steel, right? you can save up to 30 to 50 percent. Then the stiffness is higher. So meaning it's the same beam, uh, same span, you can use a smaller beam. That's why you can save. But if you same beam, you can span longer span. Uh, you can have a lo longer span beam. And uh, increase floor stiffness, meaning that vibration can be minimized. Then rapid construction because of the floor decking. Yeah? So uh, this advantages is you require a shear connector to install. Okay, then the design wise also more complex, but we don't touch on design in this course. Huh? Okay, so the third topic. So now we we just finish the uh, concrete uh, composite, just a little bit give you the idea, huh? So, but we don't go into design. So the basic design consideration, that one is the basic design consideration. So we also want to touch a little bit on design. What are the design issues we need to consider for steel structure? La? Even though I don't go into design. Okay, so you have another course on steel design. So normally I will touch on all this uh, type of frame. La. So the movement frame or simple frame. So movement frame means is like, um, it's a, uh, 
lateral resist stiffness is derived from the uh, frame itself. So meaning that it resist, it, re, it will resist the, it will provide the resistance to lateral load. Okay, so derived from the lateral stiffness from the bending rigidity or the frame member connected by the rigid joint. So there is a rigid joint, and then based on the bending, they provide the lateral resistance to the lateral force. So normally is they are embraced. Okay, so embrace rigid frame, they will be able to resist the lateral load okay, without relying on any core wall or lateral bracing system. So that is called moment frame. Simple frame, on the other hand, right? Simple frame is pin connected. So beam and column all pin connected. So they, once pin, pin connected, right, they cannot resist the lateral load. Once the lateral load come in, they will collapse. So they need to lean on the stable structure. So that is a bracing system, right? So bracing system can be um, can be by the truss, okay? Uh, can be by the truss or shear wall or bracing. So you can see in the picture, right? The right hand side is simple connection, and that is simple frame. Uh, I use the pen. Uh, there is simple frame here, and it's simple connection. So the lateral load resistance or the lateral load will go to bracing frame. So that is the concept. Okay. So you, we cannot anyhow use uh, uh, simple connection. Okay. So we got to see whether our structure can be stable or not. If there is a stability uh, bracing frame, then we can use a simple connection. If don't have, then we call, we got to use the movement connection. So that is how we choose the connection type. So if you look at this frame, right, this is a ported frame. So you can see here, right, uh, this is a moment connection. Uh, so it's a uh, moment frame in this direction. So if lateral load come in this direction, right, that frame can resist the lateral load. That's why you don't see a, a bracing in that direction. But uh, if you cannot use our code. If you look at the outer plane direction, so the uh, lateral load coming in this direction, uh, so okay. lateral load coming in this uh, uh, outer plane direction, uh, so coming from this direction. Uh, and draw the other way. Hard to draw because it's uh, it's our plane direction. Eh? So if you look at it, it should be in line with the plane. Eh? So it's parallel with the plane. Eh? So if you force in this direction, right, there is no the the beam here is connected to column, but there's no movement connection. They will be norm simply normally is a simple connection. So that's why they need to provide the bracing in that direction. So this is a bracing frame. So if you look at this side also, there is a bracing frame. So it depends on the, the availability we have, we got to choose the type of connection. So we cannot anyhow choose, uh, we want to have the beautiful connection or simple connection, but there's no bracing frame, then it will collapse. Uh, so that is the most important part. So type of frame, right, um, for the high rise, uh, uh, there are many type of frame. I just give you the uh, some idea. Uh. So the semi rigid frame meaning is they are they have a moment frame, but maybe they are not very rigid. So semi rigid. So they can go up to like 15 story height. But rigid frame meaning they are moment frame got heavily um, uh, strengthened with the, all those uh, stiffness. So they are rigid frame. They can go up to like 30 story. So more than that, right? They need a truss to uh, trust and trust and then the movement frame together. So they they can go up to 40 story plus. Yeah, so something like that. So all the uh, different height, right? They may have a different uh, type of structural type. Uh, so come to the floor plan. So th just now is that this is the uh, lateral load resistance system. Huh? This is for the gravity load. 
So it's a particular load. So based on the particular load, you got to depend on the span length. You got to choose there what type of beam or, or you want to design, right? So the steel beam, right? We can go up to uh, nine meter. More than nine meter, they are not economical. If you go with the composite beam, it can go up to twelve meter. Uh, so it's better, but more than twelve meter, they also not economical. If you go for composite truss. It can go up to 25 meter. Uh, there are many, many other types, uh, but we don't touch. Uh, so because I don't, I never show you the, the sample. So, so we can go for those are uh, pre-stress beam also can. So this pre-stress beam also can go up to like 25 meter. So post tension beam is also under this category. Uh. So and next topic I want to touch is simple construction because our our um, objective is talk about predictability, productivity. So predictability, right? You got to go for simple connection. So simple connection is meaning is simple construction. So it's a two. They are the same thing, right? Simple connection meaning is simple construction. Right? So simple. This is important for you all. Right? Simple construction. So what is simple construction mean? Simple construction meaning is member are connected with the pin joint. So this is simple joint. Eh? So uh, simple connection. And then resistance are provided by the prison. So and then this is called simple construction. So in simple construction, right, pin will be designed as a simply supported because all the connections are uh, uh, pin connection. Okay, simple connection and pin connection are same. Huh? We can interchangeably use. Huh? So they are pin connected. So the beam huh? here, the, the uh, pin plate connection, it is pin connection. So it is pin connection, right? The moment there is no bending moment. Huh? If you look at the, um, it's simply supported, right? So no bending moment. But column still need to design for some nominal moment because you have the AZ force. Then the beam got no moment, but it's actually transferred at the the pin plate location. So, but column center is here. So there is eccentricity. So due to the eccentricity, there is a nominal bending moment. So the moment can be connect, uh, uh, calculated by this way. Eh? So I don't go into detail. That's just to give you the, some idea what it means by simple construction and what are the design consideration. So because we don't go into design in this course. So column also must be continuous. So these are the three requirements for simple construction. Also important. OK, so the, uh, that is simple construction. Just give you the some idea and also uh, some important point for you to take note. Uh. Uh, PDV design, this is also uh, important uh, for you. So we got six uh, points here. You must remember. So first one is single integrated element. It's really this is similar to APCS, right? We also have the one single uh, integrated element. Then another one is a simple joint. Yeah, we need to go for simple joint. So simple joint means we need to have a simple construction. We need to have a bracing system. So another one is a minimize the temporary forward. So we got to minimize, like we've got to use a steel decking. So minimize the temporary forward. Then the, we should allow, for, instead of using a temporary forward, you should use the low level working. Okay, so like, uh, some project, right? You have a very high route over there. So um, you want to construct the steel truss or whatever. You need to put up the staging, right? You got to put up the staging. This staging is a temporary work. So instead of putting up staging, you should do at the ground level or the assembly, then put, uh, leave it up. So you don't need a staging. Maybe you need a minimum staging required. So that is the idea. And maximize the offside production uh, prefabrication. And the uh, fifth one is a uh, uh, tension high strength. So we can use the high strength 
uh, still, I think can go up to 600 or 800. I think this product are available. Then you use a composite column, right? Composite can, column can make use of the uh, concrete and steel. So the steel is very strong compared to concrete. So meaning your concrete also can be the high strong concrete. So that they are more compatible. So nowadays we use the high strong concrete plus the steel. So that become very, uh, uh, session size becomes smaller. Then uh, final one is uh, minimize the fire protection, apply fire protection. So meaning apply only one we require, uh, don't apply it everywhere. So depends on, so in this kind of, if you don't apply everywhere, right, you need to have a simulation. So fire simulation. So that one, uh, fire engineer, you need to engage the fire engineer and see where are the location that we need the fire protection. Okay, so uh, some elaboration. Single element, uh, integrated element, meaning it's like the left hand side, you can see, right? Truss and then the roofing sheet, piling all integrated together, assemble maybe at the ground level, huh? maybe not at the factory because this is very long. So, so it is fabricated and then assemble and then uh, put, on, put on top. Okay, the right hand side is a, this is an exposed station. You can see the roof, exposed station roof is very special, uh, you all know, right? Uh, Installation, you can see the uh, prefabricated one, assemble and then leave it up and install. And then simple joint. So simple joint, right? Um, this is a space uh, frame. Uh, space frame meaning one joint, you have so many members coming in. So if you don't have this kind of joint, right, the joint detailing will become very complicated. The weather joint also um, uh, is weaker and difficult to install. Okay, so we must avoid the side wedding. So we must say that wedding all must be done on the offsite factory. On site, all focus on the product joint. Uh, that make it more productive. Uh. If you, I can give you the some example. Like this is a uh, shutter linkway, right? So the actually the same design. They are the same span also. Uh, it, actually, it's the same location also. So you can see here, right? It's a weather joint. So weather joint on site is costly. Difficult. You can actually do the uh, pin joint, and then you can uh, is can be installed very easily. So that one is minimize the temporary work. So like Marina Bay Sun, right? So high up there, you cannot put up the staging to uh, arrange for the uh, uh, bridge, right? So the bridge itself is actually pre assemble below, use the uh, jet to uh, lift it up, right, then install. So that is uh, is a special uh, property of the city. Huh? You cannot you cannot do it for the uh, concrete. Concrete cannot do like that. Concrete you got to lift it up one by one, and then install. This side is uh, the right hand side is a pinnacle. Uh, the 50 story HDB building. So the, the, the bridge also installed something similar to the uh, main basin. They also assemble uh, on ground, then they jack it up and then install at the, at the top. Okay, so far any question? Today very quiet. Huh? I think last week got more question. So far, I don't see any chat also. No chat also.
OK, so the fourth topic is uh, corrosion protection. So steel is susceptible to corrosion, right? So by its corrosion happen only if they have a simultaneous presence of water and oxygen. So they must have a water and air. It's all fully submerged in the water, no corrosion, right? And no water, only in the air, then no corrosion also. Uh, that is, uh, is the uh, condition. Uh, so I think the, the factors that they determine the uh, corrosion rate, uh, there is a corrosion rate also. So like some location, you may have a, a faster corrosion. So it's a near to the sea, right? I think it's uh, easily get corroded, but it's inland, maybe less, uh, less corroded. So it depends on the, the, the three factor here. So time of wetness. So like Singapore, the raining is uh, is rain and stop then maybe not so long, right? The time of wetness. The atmospheric uh, pollution. So the sulfate uh, or chloride. So like, let's say like nearer to the sea, then uh, chloride, right? In the uh, air. So it can easily get corroded. If in the industrial environment, so near to the Jurong or Tuas, right? Maybe it easily get corroded also. So these are the conditions that, that affect the corrosion. So environment, we cannot change. Huh? So if we are at the near to the sea, we cannot change the sea. Huh? but we can change the design. By designing such a way that it will, uh, um, it will not uh, affect the, uh, accelerate the uh, environment uh, effect, environmental effect. Uh. So like you cannot, uh, you, you don't install like this, so it will collect water, right? So the time of when it will become longer. So you should install something like this. And then the base plate, the, the concrete casting also, you should have the slope so the water can easily flow off. And if there is a uh, stiffener, if you don't have a hole here, uh, water or the dust will stay there, right? So it become easily get corroded. The brazing, yeah, if you have a, uh, this uh, plate, Raising plate, and then you you have installed something like that, right? The water will flow, and then it will it will stagnate there, right? so it will it should be allowed for them to flow up, so that it can yeah time of one can be reduced. Then if you use this kind of combined section, so <clears throat> there will be a joint, narrow joint there, and this kind of narrow joint will collect the dust and then water. So it will easily get corroded also. So we should use the uh, uh, combined session. So it's, uh, so this, these are the things that we can consider in the design for the corrosion. So other than that, we can do match. We only can do, uh, oh here, yeah, okay, still got some more. Um, I think just now the same thing. I think this is the graphic. Uh, this is the um, the wording that I described again. So there will, should be the hole, okay? Uh, when we apply for those uh, carbonization, so we should have uh, some hole that just so that they can uh, the the material that can go in and then uh, uh, properly carbonize. Uh. Then also, if you use a painting, so there should be the adequate access for the painting. And then otherwise, uh, it may get corroded over there. Sometimes you may use a uh, different uh, method two together, so they can get easily get corroded also. Steel and uh, stainless steel you put together, or you put the uh, steel and timber together, they can easily get corroded also. Or otherwise, uh, you sh we should have the cover, a degree cover, the encase the steel column with the uh, concrete, then 
uh, it will provide the better protection. So other than that, we can't do much. We need to keep the protection. We need to have the protection. So normally there will be a two type protective coating. So protective coating, two type of protective coating. One is an anti-corrosion paint. So anti-corrosion paint is not commonly used. Eh? So um, depends on the uh, uh, what you want. I think some will be the metallic coating. So metallic coating is those like uh, uh, carbonized, more expensive. Eh? But anti corrosion painting is uh, less expensive, I commonly use. So you can have a three layer. Normally, the primer is the one that apply entirely on the steel surface. Then intermediate coat. So the primer, right, normally it, could, it will be done in the factory. La. So intermediate coat also can be done in the factory. Uh, but they, that will make it all the thickness. So uh, designer will have a, uh, uh, specify the thickness for the protection. Then the finish coat, mostly we're applying uh, maybe at the factory or on site, depending on the, the location. Yeah. So another coating is metallic coating. So this one, uh, metallic coating actually got four types. Okay, just for your knowledge. So uh, the uh, what are the four types? It's a uh, um, hot carbonized, thermal spray, electroplating. So electroplating and shear dicing, right? They are for the small uh, small elements. So like bolts and all the uh, connection connection plate, uh, they may use for those uh, last two uh, method. So uh, most common one is a hot carbonizing. So how the carbonizing is the one that put into the uh, modern zip. Okay, so then the metal uh, will be, uh, uh, there will be chemical reaction and they form the metallurgical bone uh, with the substrate. So I think how the carbonize is the best uh, so far. Any questions so far? Today very, very quiet. Now I move to fire protection. You all can hear. So. <laughs> yes, yes, can hear. Okay. So fire protection, uh, steel is very weak, right? For the fire resistant. You can see here. Uh, um, once it reached to uh, 500 something, 575, 570 degree, right? it will go go down to 60% of the strength. Yeah. So 60% means uh, all our design or the safety factor. 60% uh, is actually without safety factor anymore. So if you go beyond that, it will collapse. Yeah. So that's why we have a dotted line here. So normally it will reach there, right? As uh, as soon as 12 minutes. <laughs> uh. So this is important. Uh. So this is important. So fire protection, normally we have two types. So one is non-reacted and reacted. So non-reacted consists of fire bolt, spray, and then also got the fire blanket. Fire blanket is also uh, non-reacted. Reacted is those are uh, into mission bait. They are reacted. So you can see here fire bolt. So it's a bolt clad, the, uh, they, they will clad the uh, outer surface of the steel structure. So the fire spray, you can see the vermiculite. Uh, they are a bit ugly. So you can only see it, those are uh, uh, covered with the ceiling or in the factory, right? Those exposed uh, steel structure, they won't use this uh, vermiculite. Into mission paint is, is similar to the painting. So they, they are aesthetically okay for the architect. Okay, so normally this will be uh, architect's choice. 
So uh, based on UK market share, Singapore, I cannot find any market detail. Uh. So based on UK, right, uh, you look at it, uh, into mission pay is uh, more and more popular. So 2014, you can see is uh, more than 75% is all into mission pay. Because they are aesthetically pleasing. So how does it how the how how does intermission paint work? They are reactive type. So meaning like once the uh, temperature go up to certain degree, like uh, 200 to 250 degree, they will start to react. So how they react? They will they will expand. They will expand uh, 50 to one ratio. So one mm become 50 mm. So if you put uh, 6 mm coating, and it will become uh, 300 mm thick. So it will it will protect the steel by expanding the volume. So another one, right? Uh, this is uh, recently I think the capital capital green the project they use Yishun Hospital also use this. So they use the fire blanket. So means that they don't need to use a split. So uh, one advantage is they can do overlapping work with other trade. So you can have other trade ongoing. You are you also can do the fire protection together. So it's uh, uh, time can be saved. La. The cost wise, I don't have a data. La. I'm not sure whether it's cheaper or not. Yeah. But so far, what I understand is that intermission paint is uh, more is most expensive. Our Singapore market into mission paint is uh, uh, much more expensive than the other country. So another uh, topic we have is fabrication and erosion. So I will briefly touch on this topic last because it's, uh, we don't go into depth because we don't have time also. Um, Fabrication, I will just highlight about automation because we are talking about factory uh, or productivity. So in the factory, right, we can do the automation uh, and also uh, we can do uh, making use of uh, those uh, computerized uh, machine, right? If they can, you can achieve the precision very easily and your quality will be good. And like wedding, when you do the wedding, you can do the those are robotic wedding also. So on site, there there are some constraints. So in the factory environment, all can be done nicely. So meaning wedding should be done on in the factory. So the procedure just give you some uh, idea of the procedure. So normally the procedure, the sequence, right? Involve cleaning first, so clean the uh, the element, then cut, okay, cut down to the size that you need. Then you may need to drill or punch through, and sometimes you may need to bend, right? Some of the uh, the roof is a calf roof, so you will have to uh, make the uh, member in the calf shape. Then you can fabricate, attach together, first thing. Then you can actually uh, check the quality control. Right. So it's uh, uh, in accordance with the drawing or not. So whether it is in same as the uh, SPAR drawing or same as part the spec, then we can put the uh, corrosion protection, then transport. Right? So this is a uh, normal sequence or the uh, uh, fabrication. So also want to highlight about CNC machine. So CNC machine is uh, actually the, uh, the, the computerized uh, uh, programming, right? So programming control the uh, system to do the cutting machining for you. So these are some of the considerations that you can make in the design so that it's more from uh, CNC machine is more efficient. So single cut. So if you have a member here, you should cut in single cut. Should you said this? Uh, you should cut it in single cut so that it will be. Uh, you don't need to have another setup time. 
Then another thing is a hole. So hole diameter, they can punch too many hole at the, uh, at one time. Lah. So they, because if you already program it, they will just move and then uh, punch through. But if you have a many di a different diameter, you got to change the drill bit, right? So that will cut, uh, uh, cut down, uh, because it, uh, increase the time that you require. Then the alignment of hole. So the alignment of hole also, um, so because this one got to move, right? the member got to move, move, uh, it got to move it in the position so the drilling can be done. So if you have the alignment in same direction, the, your movement no need to have a up and, uh, do a back and forth. forth right? yeah? So at the same location, they can drill in the four hole at the same time. Then you move to the next position, then drill another four hole, something like that. So they should be in line, not a zigzag. Right? Uh, some designer like to do a zigzag. Zigzag got some marginally increase in uh, shear design. Okay. So another thing is a web hole. So like this case, right? The show, picture show the web hole, right? So we are punching through the hole in the web or the uh, iron beam. So once you punch through, it's very your hole is very close to the flange, right? Then they may affect the drilling. Uh, capacity, uh, they may not be able to drill, uh, depends. So they need a clearance. So all this one need to be considered in the design so that CNC machine can be used. Otherwise, uh, you got to um, complement with the manual drilling or something like that. So another one is the erosion. So erection uh, steward right, normally is a uh, four main tasks, may not be comprehensive, lah, just to give you some background. So first, you got to establish the foundation or then up or in order. So then you can start to erect, right? We can leave a place the in component in composition. Then you tidy up the, the, the bolting or welding. Or uh, like align the structure and then the column pieces are in line with the label. So the, all this one column need to be um, make sure that they are in uh, uh, particular particular deal. Uh, the plan we got to check the plan and then we we can uh, first stamp the bolting or put up the wedding. Okay, so that's it. But normally, right, you may have the uh, temporary uh, stabilizing bracing. Uh, otherwise. Uh, uh, there may a, there may be a problem during the uh, stability problem during the uh, erosion. I think I have uh, some slide later on. <coughs> oh yeah, here. Yeah. So the safety, right? Safety, uh, the is good concern during the erosion. So normally some uh, collapse, right? It happen at the erosion time, not not after the completed project. So um, collapsing after completed project is quite rare. But during erosion is quite uh, normal. Sometimes it can happen. So so it depends on some columns. We, we design the column base as a pin connection. So once you leave out the column, the, the bottom is not fixed. La. So meaning your column can topple. So you got to provide the bracing, temporary bracing. Uh, so uh, this kind is uh, the bracing, the steel wire uh, to provide the bracing. So overall stability. So overall stability means uh, just now we mentioned about simple construction. Simple construction, all the connections are pin connection. Overall stability is provided by the, the bracing frame. So before you have a, uh, complete the whole floor uh, connected to the bracing frame, before that, right, you part of the erected structure is not stable. So you got to provide the bracing. Uh, that need to be assessed by the qualifying person. Uh, because once you connected everything and you cast the concrete, right, then it's yes, they are stable. But before that, it's, uh, it's a very important part that you got to consider uh, let PE to assess the stability. So another thing is a stability of the beam. So
So I think those already uh, land the steel design, right? You know. So once you design the steel beam, there is two types. One is a restraint beam. The other one is unrestrained beam. So restraint beam means is is restrained by the concrete at the top. Just now means means like composite construction. So if it is restrained, right, their capacity can be fully utilized. But if it is not restrained, then capacity will be reduced depending on the 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 buckling length. So so during construction, before the concrete gain strength, right, it's not restrained. Uh, so that time we got to uh, check. Designer need to check two time, uh, so temporary condition and permanent condition. So this is uh, one of the. Um, uh, I think it's from the this uh, resin track one. So you can see the the erosion time. You can see this is a cantilever. So this cantilever uh, frame, you, you look at it during uh, erosion time is very, very critical. So they can actually top it any time. Yeah. So they don't have a brazing roofing sheet or any other cross brazing here. So it's not there, meaning it's a very critical time. I have another example from the truss. This is a 59 meter truss. It's a roof truss. So it was topper. Uh. So you can see here the 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 uh, white color actually is a top pair. This uh, this truss top pair. So during erosion, there is a wind load also. So they are not uh, provided with the uh, the kind here. So now now the kind is shown here just for illustration. So if you don't provide with the stif uh, stability temporary stabilization uh, bracing, it will it will top pair. So normally right. After you have installed two trusts, then you provide this uh, bracing. This uh, I use the pen. If you provide this cross bracing, and you provide this cross bracing, the other side also the same. Huh? The other side also uh, they should provide the cross bracing. Uh, then it's stable. Then you can remove the uh, this uh, temporary or the uh, kind. Guiding, uh, guiding wire so that uh, now it's stable already. Then you can install the subsequent one without providing any stability. So stabilize, uh, stability is very important during the erosion. Okay, this is the last topic that we have. It ever connection details. So you can see here, right, the cost breakdown. So fabrication and uh, uh, construction. Connection detail uh, control the fabrication and uh, construction. Right? So how you fabricate is also affected by the how you design the connection. How you construct the speed is affected by the your connection detail as well. So it's about uh, 40 to 45 percent. Yeah, so the connection detail is very important. So our Singapore Steel Society, right, they have published the, uh, this uh, design guide for beautiful steel connection. The, this connection guide is very comprehensive, yeah. The designer all got to refer to this, right? yeah, very comprehensive. So you should uh, uh, make use of this. Okay, I got uploaded in the, the Microsoft team also. But you can search in the internet and you can download freely also can. But this is important. Huh? There's this uh, simple connection or rigid connection. So if you let's say I ask you what is the definition of simple connection, uh, then you should be able to answer. So simple connection meaning it's a capable of transmitting calculated force. So force is only shear or tension only. Huh? There is no bending moment. Uh, so that's why we call it simple connection. So, but meaning right, <coughs> your detail design, connection design also must uh, accept the resulting rotation because, right, uh, you have a, a column like that, you have a beam like that. But beam to rotate in this manner, right, 
simple connection. So that connection need to allow the beam to rotate it. Otherwise, the movement will induce. Yeah. So because we are not having the uh, uh, purely simple, because they got uh, many both to uh, connect. So like if you you have only one boat connection, that is a pin connection. Uh, but if you have two, two or three boat, they have a uh, nominal bending movement. So we got to make sure that our connection design is is capable of having the rotation. They will allow the rotation to happen. Uh, then become simple connection. Rigid connection is something that they can transmit the force and bending moment as per required. Eh? So as per our uh, structural analysis. So they must also be the stiff enough to prevent the joint deformation. So many like. Right? Uh, the joint is uh, 90 degree before loaded, right? After loaded, your beam will deflect, right? Due, due to the loading, beam will deflect. So after loaded, also your 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 column will be uh, uh, deformed also, so 90 degree as well. So they will they will prevent the deformation. So that is a rigid connection. Any question? If you uh, got any question, you should ask. Huh? This is uh, important. You can write it in your own way, also can. Yeah, as long as you can capture all this that I explain. So some uh, example of simple connection. Simple connection uh, here, right? Uh, it's a end plate connection. So this is end plate. Yeah? So you can see here the, the beam to beam connection, uh, beam to column connection, and the, this is minor AC connection. So the right hand side is a pin plate connection. Pin plate connection is more popular based on my experience. Okay, so some example. This is from the guidebook as well. So guidebook got say this is prefer, this is non prefer. You can see what is the difference. So different is the the film plate. So this film plate is extended to beyond the flange. Okay, beyond the flange. The right hand side is within uh, inside. Huh? So because of that. The, the beam got to have a uh, coping, okay? Beam got to have a coping. So that made the difference. So they got uh, do a case study. So on, only this case, uh, they do a case study. So the beam preparation, film plate preparation, and wedding, all this uh, breakdown tasks. Uh, so the before method, right? Actually at the end uh, can save 43%. Okay, so 30 man power, man hour, uh, 53 man hour become 30 man hour. So, can save a lot. So, means that uh, the connection can affect a lot of uh, uh, productivity for fabrication and installation. So, this one include the installation, uh, not only fabrication. The next is a uh, film plate connection, but it's a uh, beam to column connection. So this is the major exit connection you can see here. And this is minor exit. So minor exit, um, the, beam, the plate will be extended outward beyond the flange so that it can be connected. So just now I mentioned simple connection called nominal bending moment. Uh, I think they got mentioned uh, 100. This value is nominally assumed as 100. Uh, this is uh, safely assumed as 100. Uh, but that provided they go all the way into the, the plate. Uh. So uh, if you look at the simple connection just now, right? Uh, my my detail show that is uh, the beam will be going into the flange, uh, into the web. 
So that kind of connection is 100, but it's here, right? It's extended already. So in that case, you got to modify your nominal bending moment in the simple connection design. Yeah. So just, just this is just for uh, uh, info. Uh, so I, I won't be testing all this in the exam. So another thing is a moment connection. Okay, so the, we have talked about simple connection already. Now we move to moment connection. So how does the moment connection looks like? So moment connection meaning you got to transfer the bending moment from the beam to the column. So bending moment, right? You are already learned that bending moment can be resolved into tension and compression. So iron beam, they are at the uh, flange is very thick, so they will carry the tension and compression. So we got to transfer to the column, right? So there will be a uh, uh, welding. So that's why they have a welding. You can see here, this is welded. So that they can straight away transfer. So you, they also follow the flange thickness and width. So we want to avoid the side welding, right? So that's why uh, to avoid the side welding, uh, that's why this uh, small stuff is here. Eh? So, so this uh, small stuff is here. So this one come in together with the uh, uh, wedding. Okay, hold on. Eh? Put the wrong one. So this wedding still need to be done at the side. Uh, so because there's no choice. This wedding is done on, this one is done on uh, at the factory, but it's yellow to this uh, gray color, uh, need to be done on site. There is no choice, yeah. And unless we use a, a nice, nice page one, a nice detail, uh, nice, nice detail can have. So this uh, film plate connection also can have the uh, shear, this one called it shear plate line. Uh, so shear plate with the wedding con weather connection is called moment connection. So you can see here, right? We want to avoid the uh, side wedding. So in that case, this uh, column and this uh, small uh, stuff will be weathered on uh, at the factory. They weather. Then on site, right? Only wear with the uh, beam and then the bolted. Okay. So only bolted connection. So this can be a moment connection as well. So if this is a moment value is smaller, you can use this one. It's intermediate, you can use this one. But if moment is very big, maybe you can use this one. So this is a splice connection. So all border connection. So we can avoid side wedding. Uh, so if you use the, the previous one, there will be a side wedding. So no. Uh, so it depends on the uh, designer. So how you want to uh, detail it, so can facilitate the uh, faster construction and faster fabrication. Yes, I can hear you. I, I can hear you actually. I, I can hear uh, uh, a little bit, but not clearly. The decking will be difficult to put right if you put this moment connection with so many plate and boat. Ah, uh, uh -huh. uh, this is a problem. Uh. Yeah, so the decking, right? Decking, the, it will be slightly uh, modified. Yeah, you need to modify slightly. So like this kind of uh, 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 splicing, it can be done. You can splice bottom also can. Uh, you can put at the bottom. So it depends on uh, what kind of uh, decking. So, but this uh, extended, uh, this uh, end plate maybe may have an issue. Right? So extended end plate maybe, uh, if this one cannot, then we can use the uh, splice. Right? Yeah. Splice can be done. Right? Okay. Yeah. So extended one, uh, I think decking, decking can be cut. Right? I think uh, some decking, right? They even need to go into the like, uh, to say that uh, some uh, near the column, right? They got to cut the uh, this uh, taking location as well. Same, yeah. So here also they can cut. Uh, they can cut to accommodate the the 
the end plate lah, possible. I'm not sure lah. Eh? Uh, you are you are, you are what in the control that you are can feel better. But it's to to me right. Splice is uh, quite commonly to use. Yeah, this kind of uh, extended. This is called extended end plate lah. They, because it is extended to the upper because to, uh, they need the bending moment. So extended end plate connection is not commonly used. So far, this kind of thing used. Yeah. So because flexibility, this uh, plate can be if you don't want to expose outside, you can put it below. So both sides uh, become a smaller plate both sides. Okay, so we touch on simple connection, uh, pin connection and moment connection. Uh, I just make it simple, uh, pin connection. Uh. So the definition is important. Uh, uh, and then what is the, the example? Okay, so you got to give the example. Uh, let's say I ask you, what is, give me one example of moment connection. So you got to remember, uh, so like, uh, okay, this is moment connection. Uh. Then we need to draw like this. No need, la, no need. La. Just, just, just write this name only. La. <laughs> I don't yeah. ask you to draw. La. Otherwise, you, you, you are <laughs> in trouble. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. sorry. Uh, you indicate the distance 100 was a mean. La. Minimum 100 or, or what? Oh, 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 yeah. That one is a recall or the, the previous slide. I go to the previous slide. I think just now before the break. It's a formula. Lah. Yeah, yeah, it's here. So it's to, <coughs> to calculate the nominal bending moment. So this nominal bending moment, right? Uh, normally, this is Coke allowance. So normally, we, we can assume that this is 100. So this is also oh. assumed that 100. But I just now, I in the simple connection, I highlight, right? This is assumed 100 because the, the beam actually go into near to the web. That's why they assume 100. But uh, if you look at the just now, the our PDV connection, right? They are not they are not that uh, configuration ready. So meaning you cannot use 100 anymore. So the assumption is different. Uh, so it's uh, this one, right? This is never go into the web near to the web. So this uh, dimension cannot be 100. It will be more than 100. Depends on the the size of the column. <laughs> Depends on the size of the column, really. So uh, that will be you got to modify now. The designer got to modify just to highlight only. Yeah. Okay. So let's say the simple connection, right? I ask you what is the uh, is one example of simple connection. You just give a pin plate connection. You don't need to give this one. Uh, no need. Uh, so just get simple connection, pin plate connection. And plate connection is also the simple connection, and uh? plate connection. So you just say and plate connection. Uh, that is one example already. OK, la, I give you all the tip already. La. OK, so BTV connection uh, detail, right? That is the most uh, essence of our lecture. La. We want to we want everyone to adopt BDV uh, connection detail so that everyone, uh, the, the productivity will be improved. La. So definitely this is important. Uh. <laughs> this is important. So there are many recommendations in the guidebook. I only highlight a few that we can discuss. La, yeah? The rest, I, I just, uh, you all can go and study. So first one is a standardization. So the connection type, right? If you use a simple connection, let's say pin plate connection. So you should use the pin plate connection throughout the project. Uh, you use a simple uh, pin plate connection and then also use the end plate connection. So it's not so efficient. Uh, so you should use a typical uh, standardized connection. OK, 
second. So the second one is avoid using the poles with diameter close to each other. Right. So diameter very close to each other, right? They were they will get error. Lah, eh? Human being, we you you go up thinking that this is a uh, M16, but up there you go uh, you see it's M20. Then you got to change the bolt for this thing. Lah, eh? So normally the recommendation is um, uh, maximum three size. Okay, maximum use three size, but um, don't use too close to each other also. Too, too many sites also don't use uh, that kind of recommendation. So and then don't use the different grade of both. With the same diameter, so it can get a uh, mistake also. Huh? So we call uh, um, great great 8.8, right? Great 8.8 and uh, another one is a uh, 5.5. I, I can't remember already. Yeah, so you did we got two two usually we got two grade uh, uh, for the both. Then using the bolt uh, more than 330 mm. So more than 30 mm are difficult to tighten. Uh, so don't use, you can use many both. Uh, so don't use the bigger diameter if possible. So these are the recommendations. So important, uh, let's say I ask you to list down the recommendation, you all should be able to list down. So these are, uh, you you can list down only just the, this uh, uh, the wording. Uh. No need to give the explanation below. Uh. So explanation below is for you to understand. OK, so minimize the use of slip critical book. This is a uh, uh, friction book. Those that are not sure you are still designed or cover the connection. Uh. So we got uh, normal, normal book and uh, friction book. Friction book meaning is Instead of resisting by the bearing, they are resisted by the uh, friction between the plate. So to get the friction between the plate, right, you need to tighten it. You need to tighten it to certain degree. OK, so I think there's a torch. Right? So normally that is uh, a bit more expensive. You need to check. So I and I do need to check the, the how much torque you achieve during the uh, uh, installation. So that is a bit more expensive. So minimize it. Don't use it. It, it will slow down your, your uh, erosion. <laughs> Another thing is a slotted hole. So don't use a slotted hole. These are thicker than the both diameter. Uh, the, uh, the, most, uh, the reason is it is difficult to, and costly. Uh. So they got to use with the flame cut. Uh, so cutting is different, difficult. This is uh, for the bolted connection. So the side we want to use bolted connection. I right. on in the factory you can use welding or uh, weather connection or bolted connection. I think all can be done at the factory. Right? So meaning how we do, uh, I think just now already covered, you have a column here, then you small stuff connected with the column, and then you splice it. Uh, that is a uh, recommendation. Uh. So you can uh, do the bolted connection on site. And the uh, number eight is uh, Splice connector. So the splice connector, right? We got to give at least uh, 15 mm difference. So uh, the plate, right? The the yellow color plate here, it should be 15 mm both side smaller than the flange. Okay. So that this one should be the smaller than the flange. Because why? Let's say you are both got some problem, then you can do the welding to compensate the loss. So that is the thing. Yeah. I think I got cover app. Is it this one? Looks like this is cover app. Let me see. Oh, not cover app.
So this is last one, last slice. Uh, we got two more recommendation. So all together, 10 recommendation, uh, but actually in the kite book or even more. So trying to use a fillet worm instead of a nutrition pack worm. So fillet worm mini is like that. Uh. So you have a uh, uh, perpendicular two piece together, you can wear it both sides. So this is fillet worm. You can also, and also put in the, uh, how does the drawing looks like for the fillet worm. So fillet worm shape will be like that. This is fillet worm. The back way is like that. The, the, the symbol in the drawing. So this is back way. So filler wear are less expensive. Lah. So the reason is, and also the less time consuming preparation wise. This one need to prepare. You got to prepare the chamfer and then you got to uh, wear it. Then the last one is uh, limit the maximum filler wear size. So the filler wear, right? Sometimes you may specify 12 mm. But when you wear it single pass, when they do the single pass, right? can only achieve up to 8 mm. Single pass means uh, you wear it one round, then before you wear some more, you got to give uh, uh, give a break. Uh, eh? so, <laughs> because it's uh, very hot. So, and then you got to do so that your time, time is there. So you single pass can go up to 8 mm only. So single pass go, you want to achieve 3 mm, you got to go one single pass and then next time come back and another top back with another 4 mm. So it was waste time. So means that uh, only limit to 8 mm. More than 8 mm, then uh, use the uh, penetration backward. That will be more efficient. Uh, that is all the recommendation. Uh. Sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, uh, I can hear you. One, uh, I want to ask you, this one fillet well is the one, sometimes they got checked after the welding, uh, we got to do the inspection, the what, N, NDE, uh, something like N, NDI uh, or something like that. What? NDT, la, is it? Uh, non uh, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, NDT inspection, right? Yeah, they do okay. have. Yeah, okay, so okay. we got a few types, uh, a few types of inspection. I think it's, uh, I forgot the name, but... um. The, also, I, yeah, yeah, ah, ah, yeah, 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 you, you all can remember. Yeah, I think the, uh, uh, I think ultrasonic is more, uh, more comprehensive. Uh. Yeah, you can see the, weld, uh, the void inside the welding. Yeah, what so I, I, one. yeah, so, uh, as a QP, right, that one we were specify. Every joint by is like um, lesser oh, some cellar, uh, uh, but percentage uh, will be smaller, uh, yeah. So then, then, then there is a magnetic something, right? Magnetic uh, test, right? Mag yeah. Magnetic particle test, uh, yeah, MPT test, right? That one is uh, faster, so they will apply for all the joint, something like that. So more percentage, uh, yeah. So there will be a QP will have a specification. Uh, so they are drawing will have a, this a table showing what, how many percentage you got to do there, what kind of test. Uh. Okay, so that's all. Uh, the, you can download here uh, the link, right? All the, uh, the guidebooks you can download. I think we can go for our... Uh, I give you a break, uh, eh? then, 10 more minute break, then we can come back and do the uh, tutorial. So 10 more minutes, uh, 921, uh, 921 come back. Uh.
Okay. Then we should continue. Okay. Hope, hope you can see the. My one. I will launch the quiz. Okay, you, you all can see the, the how you can join the quiz. Maybe I should share it, uh, share it by your, let me see that. Uh, copy the link and then give you in the chat. Uh, if you are using the mobile, then maybe just use the one. Okay, so one so far no one joined yet. Oh, okay. Thanks. One. This is also a very nice one. Uh, give your name uh, short form also can, but I will just um, keep it as a record for our participation. Okay, some more, some more. We, we only have 17. Any problem, let me know. If you got problem joining, then I can. Okay, 12, 22. Sir, I'm using the phone. Uh, I unable to. Hey, using the phone can. Uh, you can just uh, go to this uh, website and key in the pin. Ken. Let's go to this website. You can you can join. Can AJ? I see your name only AJ. Right? I cannot see the full name. <laughs> uh, let me see. Joseph. You said join uh, quiz.com, uh, Join my quiz.com. Yeah. www.joinmyquiz.com. Okay, I try. Yeah. Then at the top, right, you have a key, code to key in. So why different lecture using different quiz? The other day, uh, the other day, uh, only 25 students is allowed. Uh. So that's why that one don't want to use anymore. I, I have to, more than 25. Uh, yeah. To the new toys. Sorry? To the to have new toys, new game. Yeah, this one it looks like a new game. Uh. It, uh, I only got 25. Eh? How can the, the rest never join? Eh? Uh, still on the break. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Never mind. We will start. Uh. I think the later got no time already. Okay, we start. Uh. So it, it, it will keep the points based on the timer. So you got to answer quickly. You can off the uh, audio if you don't want the sound. Uh.
Okay, uh, let's see. Oh. Oh. Okay, let me see this one. Um, yeah, so the steel swatcha is not cheaper. La. Some country may be cheaper, la, but Singapore is not cheaper. So that is not the advantage. So the rest are the advantage of the steel construction. Eh? So uh, you are test two, right? Your advantage and disadvantage of steel construction is important. That's why I have this question in the tutorial. So that you can remember. Eh? Okay, next question. This is very fast. Huh? Twenty seven. One never answer. Le. This is something like gain. Eh? Tho, tho is the uh, leading. Eh? Mm. So it's true, la. I, was, I, I still got seven, seven force there. <laughs> so still got a uh, very little resistance against the fire. Huh? That is correct. Next. Oh, Okay, so CR connector are required, not uh, required to achieve the composite connection. Okay, next question. Hmm. OK. 
see, I still got force left. So that relative stability or simple frame must be provided by brazing, right? Brazing frame. That is correct. Oh, Jojo is the fastest. Oh, like uh, I can see the all the above line is not correct. Eh? It should be simply supported, right? So simple construction, all the connections are pin connections. So pin should be designed as a simply supported. Okay, next. This is important question. So there are six uh, principles of physical design and you must know. So now become a first one. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. This is correct. Number D is correct. They got some mistakes. Huh? Okay. So the the first three right is all the principle or the design. The last one is not. I purposely make it uh, maximize. Huh? So it should be minimized. Huh? Jojo is always the fastest. Okay, true for that. This is important question. Eh? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, divide that into two types, eh? not four types. Eh? Four and three still got a lot. <laughs> okay, divide that into two types. Uh, one is re-edit and the other one is a non-re-edit. Okay, I still got four, huh? three, three of you are still. So it should be true. Huh? Okay, this is the last one. This is also an important question. So um, B is correct. Huh? Using both with diameter close to each other. So we should avoid using the both with diameter close to each other. The rest are recommended. So, so only this one is not recommended. So recommendation is important. So you must know what are the recommendations for video design. Okay, I think uh, this one is the last one already. So let me see. I can end it. Okay. Okay, Pei, to, to and uh, Jojo. Uh, so you are the first, second, third. I, I have no price for you. Uh. <laughs> Maybe the bonus point. Uh. I download the research result first. Okay, download that ready. And 
let me see. I still got two more from last uh, last lecture. OK, so still got two more. Let's do it this one. Then we end the session. I think the, the code would be changed already. Huh? So you got to re. Uh, I, let me share this one. OK, B and then type in. Just now we got 29. Two more. Three more. Three left. Uh. Never mind. We, we start. Uh. I think this one just very easy question. Uh. <laughs> uh, why you laugh? Uh, first question time already. <laughs> IPCH is what? Oh I yeah. ICPH. Try your lucky. Yeah. ICPH. Wow, you forgot already. Uh. Mm -hmm. ICPH is like integrated. Um, I forgot also. <laughs> <laughs> Integrated construction prefabricated hub. Yeah, prefabrication hub. Yeah. Okay, la, so one they say is faultless, falsely. Eh? So we must make sure it depends on our simply design, eh? simplicity, standardization, so that they can survive. Eh? <laughs> we got five IPCH in Singapore. Eh? Okay, next one. I think this is a, a only two two question I have. Okay, hey, so one, one third is correct, the rest are not correct, huh? only one third. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, I should end the session. Can't stay answer. Uh, 
and so and the question. Jojo is still the first. Let me get the see what is the result. I cannot oh okay here. Download result. Okay, Ken. Um so I give you some uh revision, huh? 